I want to introduce Wahaj Faruqi to the stage. Wahaj, come on here, little brother. Let's go. Stealing my limelight again. All right, see you later, brother. All right, brother, get off the stage. <laughs> my stage now. Webinar Con, welcome. Thank you for joining me. My brother just talked about 2Xing your guys' LTV. I didn't get to see how many of you guys raised their hands up when, uh, when he said, who has a back-end high-ticket sales team? Can I see a raise of hands again? All right. Cool. And who doesn't have a high-ticket sales team? Okay, a few of you guys. So before, you guys are seeing the face of people, of us, actually, that was us, when we didn't have a back-end sales team. And I'm gonna teach you guys how we got to the Mark Cuban in a Suits Sharks type of vibes. 2K offer, 15% refund, 30% upsell rate with a 10K price point, all right? So, when we were at the when we were at the before face, that's what we looked like. And what were we doing? We were just doing what was normal, right? We had a typical sales pitch. We offered a free goal setting call. We pitched every single person that jumped on the call with our setters uh, for the high ticket back end. I can like hear my spit. It's kind of weird. Okay, so we jumped on a free goal setting call and we just pitched everyone, super typical, very normal, and our upsell percentage was like six to eight percent. And this was, again, normal for me, and we were in this position for like six months. And, and when I was looking at the industry, and I was like, hey, I wanna push past that 10% upsell rate. This was like the barrier that I had in my mind because there was a few people that were doing it in the industry. And for the six months, we couldn't break past that 10%. And so what did we do? We tried to brute force it. High ticket closer vibes, buy or die. And we just push, 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 one call closing. And guess what happened? It did not work. I was confused. I'd been in the high ticket space for three years. And what I'd done so well, I couldn't do again. I don't know what was happening. And this is what the stats looked like. Okay, this was what normal looked like. We had 430 students buying every single month. And on our back end, we had 166,000 in new cash collected. Okay? And think about it, if you don't have a high ticket back end and then you bring a high ticket back end, what happens is all this cash, it's cash you never had before, right? And this is money that's coming in straight to the, to the bottom line and it's profit. And so when, I was, when we were looking at these numbers back then, it didn't, it didn't have all these red numbers because that's what the data is showing from today. But this was still good. 6%, 10%, it's good. Uh, so the other stats right there, upgrade percentage, 5.8%, and then CPS. What that stands for is cash per student. Okay, so that's like the front end cash per student. It was $389. So the next slide I'm gonna show you guys, I want you guys to like really think about, this one? Oh, that one. All right. So the next slide, oh, there you go. Oh, test. All right, so the next slide I'm, I'm gonna show you guys, you guys are gonna like, it's gonna blow your mind. All right, and I want you guys to really look at the numbers. Look at that. So there's a few <laughs> key differences here. Some big stuff right here too. 319 new students, okay? $580,000 cash collected. This is after fees. Cash collected in the bank account, one month. Back to what we had before, 166 with more students, right? These numbers on the right side, upgrade percentage, holy smokes, 
0.4%. Who here has who here has seen these numbers? Who here has heard of these numbers? 1,828 CPS cash per student. Okay? Now, I want to show you. I want, who wants that light? Who wants that light? Let me hear. I can't hear you guys. Who wants that life? Are you guys about that life? About that life. All right, I'm gonna show you guys show you guys that life because I want you guys to live that life. Because that's why we're at WebinarCon. We want that life. All right. So in order for you guys to get that life, there was three shifts that we made. All right. The first one, the hardest one internal shift. Shift the culture. Now shift the culture. I know you guys are thinking like, what the heck does that even mean, Kobe Bryant? <laughs> right, so let's start from the bottom. One call closing, transaction focused, manipulation. This is the industry normal. We're so transaction focused. We want to capture as much money as possible, as fast as possible. Think about it, right? This person just bought a $2,000 program from us. A $2,000 program, hard-earned money, 2,000 cold hard cash. And now we want to sell them a 10K product right away? Is that how you guys would treat a friend? Who here would treat a friend like that? No one. Maybe someone wants to do. <laughs> Who, okay, let me ask you guys another question. A and I'm not judging. Who here would treat your mom like that? There you go. A and I would judge you if you would. <laughs> right? So when it comes to business, we become so focused on the transaction, so focused on the numbers, we lose what makes us human. And what makes us human is that bridge. Love, generosity, curiosity, actually caring about the customer that just bought from us. Shifting from being transaction focused to breakthrough focused. And it only comes from being curious about your customer genuinely caring about your customer, trying to make sure that they're taken care of after they purchased from you. And we wanna lose that nasty breath. What's it called? Who knows that stinky breath? Commission breath. <laughs> right? That's what we sound like when we're on that one call close, manipulation, free bonus, you know? You, you gotta buy now, or you're not gonna get this discount. That's not true. So, and it, the shift of culture comes from the leaders. The leaders have to truly stand behind thinking from a place of abundance, right? We wanna focus on the breakthrough for the customer. And again, we wanna master this leadership because they all learn from you. All your employees, they learn from you. If you say one thing, but you reward the other thing, what are they gonna say? Okay, don't listen to what he's saying, listen to how, how he's acting, right? So we gotta act different, shift the culture. And when, the, oh man, the culture, it's so dang important. When you have the most solid culture, the hardest things become so damn easy, right? You guys ever been like part of a sick, a sports team where you come in the locker room and you're just like, these guys are my boys. I'm going to go on that court and crush it because these people I, I live and die for. Who here has a team like that, honestly? There we go. There you go. Be proud of that team. Let's go. We need more hands up next time we come to WebinarCon. All right? So I'm going to show you guys how to get that. The next thing we did 
was, so we figured out the culture thing. Now, everyone's dialed in to just crush it, all right? The next thing was understanding who we're selling to. So the audience we had was an 80 percent female audience. And one cop poses, you know, hard sale tactics, fake free bonuses don't, don't work with females. What, <laughs> there you go, nope. <laughs> I should have talked to you last week, you know? <laughs> so females, they, they want a strong community. They want to be part of something bigger, right? They want support. They want security. So our selling changed to that, right? Support-based selling. We ditched the one call post. We ditched the fake, fake scarcity. And we wanted to be a brand that was actually trusted by all. And that requires work. And that requires like the whole program experience to be unified from the marketing first ad they ever see till the very end uh, of the customer journey experience. Everything has to be unified. The same way you put in, uh, same work, uh, amount of effort you guys put in the VSL, in the ads, the scripting, like the language, the copywriting, the exact same work has to go into the sales script, the sales presentations, the, uh, the program details, you know, the, the way that your, communi uh, your coaches communicate with your students, everything has to be unified. And if there's a drop off at any point in that experience, the customer, the customer is gonna know, the customer is gonna feel that. I bought this thinking this, but I got that. And now I don't feel good about that. And we don't want that, okay? And that requires a lot of work. So let me, let me just go to the next slide here. So what we actually did is we went like, we took a three, mean, three month period and we revamped our entire program. Like every single video redone, every, and we custom coded this entire like platform. Uh, we added gamifications to it. Like they felt that they had fun going through the content and it was aesthetically pleasing. I've seen programs there, there are like just two hour long videos posted up and then hey, just watch this live recording I did two years ago on a Zoom call and this is your program, right? It's, there's no experience to it. That took us three months and it really improved that customer experience. So then they trusted us, right? The culture was right and everything. So let me go back. The final thing, and this is like a very big, big shift that we made in our, in our sales culture. And I want you guys to like feel the power of this, all right? We gave exit doors always. Now, think about it this way. Imagine this entire room and it had no doors. No doors, it was just walls all around. No windows, well, there's no windows already, but no doors, nothing. How, like, think about that for a second. How would that make you feel right now? No doors, no exits. Trapped. What else? Like, fear, anxious, right? That's how it feels like when closers, salespeople are pressuring all the time. Hey, this is the time you gotta make a decision. There's no doors. People don't buy with like enjoying. People, uh, James yesterday said, people want to love what they buy, right? And when you give exit doors, you give them many exit doors. Like, hey, you if you want to do this, you can do this. If you don't want it, that's perfectly fine. There's the exit door. There's the exit door. There's the exit door, right? and they choose to stay in the room. And that makes a huge difference because they're choosing to stay in the room, choosing to be on the call with your salespeople, okay? Are you guys like, how are you guys feeling so far? Good, good? Okay, cool. So now we got the culture, right? Now we got the who, like we know who, do, uh, we know who, who, who our audience is and we know how to sell them. The next part is to invest in your team. One of the biggest shifts that we made with our team was the label, we looked at the labels that we used for our sales team, right? Who here calls our sales team instead of the closers? Okay, right? So we shifted from setters and closers uh, if I put like a center and closer here, and I'm like, hey, who's the boss? Who do you think is gonna raise the hand? 
closer, right? Our sales team does not function without our success coaches. They are an all-star team, and I want them to know that. And it starts with what we label them. So we change their names from setters to success coaches because they bring so much success to our students and our company. And then our closers became advisors. And like we have to stick to this label because again, there's this like seniority thing that happens, there's this uh, culture that shifts. And this, again, the success coaches, we cannot have a business that gets to a 30% success rate, uh, upsell rate without them doing the work that they do, okay? The next part is the team got immense product knowledge. When we wanna deliver an amazing customer experience and we have our success coaches on the call with them, we wanna make sure that they're experts in the program that they're actually talking about. So we, went, we, went, we put this entire sales team through the entire pro product so they know exactly what they're talking about. Some even started the business, but it was necessary. But they learned everything, all the ins and outs, they knew, knew where everything is, so when they spoke with a the student, they got that uh, real like, experience. Right? Hey, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not talking to this person just so that they can sell me, I'm talking to this person because they can help me succeed in this business. It's actually true, okay? The next part is we did like intense, rigorous workshopping. So when we have a culture of excellence, the, the thing, the hard part is maintaining that culture of excellence. Every single, like the best people in the game, they watch game tape. LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, they all watch game tape. And salespeople, this team has to do, do the exact same. And there's two parts to workshopping. Okay, number one, is you wanna keep them sharp always. It's very easy that when you're at the top and you start like performing well to like not do the things that got you there in the first place. Right, you get to like ease off, oh I, I had some of my best months, I'm gonna chill a little bit, I'm gonna relax a little bit. When you're workshopping, you're, what you're doing is you're constantly sharpening, sharpening the blade. You're constantly teaching them, you're constantly creating this feedback loop of hey, this is the thing that I have to keep on improving, keep on working on. One week off of that, you're gonna see like a drop in per performance. So rigorous workshop, what we do is we do three weekly like coaching workshops uh, with our entire team. We do one one-on-ones weekly, and then we do daily meetings, okay? Now that's like sharpening the blade, keeping them sharp always. The second part of it is that when you have this incredible culture, it, it becomes something that's so delicate, right? And what it does, it keeps nurturing, keeps building this culture in that environment. And if you stop paying attention to that culture, because it's so delicate, you, know, you miss a week, you miss two weeks, that culture starts cracking. And we never want that to happen. Okay, so that's like the two parts why you have to keep doing this. <coughs> the next part, we built like an internal training portal so that when we hired new reps, they got to KPI very, very fast. And I think the, the other part of this is like, when, when the sales leader, the authority uh, of the community, of the culture, is teaching that portal, right, it's teaching these new reps, they're coming in and looking at the leader that hey, this is the person that I just learned from. If you're teaching, if you're you know providing a training from someone else other than the leader, like it'll still be fine, but that leader won't have the authority and you know respect from the entire team. And so that's like the second part of uh, the internal training portal. The third, and the next part is we built a custom hiring funnel. When you have like this amazing community, when you have an amazing program, when you have this amazing culture, you wanna hire the right people. Again, culture is delicate, you wanna bring the people that are gonna fit in the culture first, so we hire for culture number one, and then the performance later, because the training, we can train people up. Cool, everyone with me? Good? Hard work, hard work. But when you do this, you get the results. And this is what the results look like. This is one of our coaches' pipeline. First follow-up, 118 opportunities.
Second follow-up, 111 opportunities. Third follow-up, 137 opportunities. And fourth follow-up, 261 opportunities. How many of you guys are getting on calls with your customers, four calls in, five calls in? And what happened was our average sales cycle went from nine days to 23 days. 3X almost. And again, this period of time, like, it gives them the experience, it gives them the trust. They, you know, they respect you, it builds authority, and then the money starts coming in. This is an example, and it's not some extraordinary example, it's a regular example. Darlene becomes a student, April 6th. She gets a text, uh, it's like, a, I don't know if you guys can, can see that, but it's from the success coach. Very detailed, very caring, they got emojis in it. Then they have a success call, 30 minutes long. Then they check in on progress. Then they text, uh, like, uh, Darlene achieved, achieved a milestone, and uh, the success coach sent her a text. Then they have a second success call, 30 minutes long. Then they check in again, August 3rd now. Then they have the third success call, another 20 minute call. And then they have a call with the advisor, 40, 40 minute call. Seven month long journey, seven calls total, 83 text messages, tons of notes taken about the student. That requires work. No one's gonna do this unless they have a culture of excellence. And the thing is, they like, they're, the team is intrinsically motivated to get this done. The comp is still the same, but they do it because they, they're part of this bigger vision. They have this abundance mindset. They care for the students. We also tied student uh, coaches to student transformations like, hey, when you had this, when you put on all this work for the student, these are the results that came out. You changed this person's life. And the, you know, like you changed this person's life. That's so powerful. We wanna like on a weekly basis show what's happening. What, what, what's the point of working so hard when you're not making a change? This is the impact they're creating right away. We, we wanna show that. And so Darlene, once she signed up for our back end, uh, right there, so mid ticket she bought uh, April 6th, our high ticket 10K uh, pip she bought uh, on Halloween there. Uh, read the text message. Oh my God, congratulations Darlene, as you got this news that you were accepted. I'm so excited, it's a long message. You know, there's lots of love, lots of care in this. Congrats, exclamation mark. So genuinely thrilled and happy for you. AI can't do that, you know? That's human connection right there. That's, that's amazing. It makes me so happy seeing that. So there's this game that I used to play when I was younger, Civilization. Who, have, who has heard that game? Yeah, there you go. So in Civilization, there's three types of victories that you can win to beat the game. Number one is a scientific victory. Number two is a domination victory. So like scientific, you just have like the best AIs, I guess, and you take over the world. The second part, domination, you just conquer all the lands. And the third, the hardest way to win is the culture victory. And then when I, when I started seeing interactions like this, that's when I knew I won the culture victory for this game. The worth of a culture is not measured by its accomplishments, but in how these accomplishments, and how these accomplishments last, and how they are remembered. The beauty that you have inspired our people to create will ensure that our culture stands for all time. Boom. Who wants to get that victory? Let's go, culture victories. All right, so the next slide, or the next shift that we made was the external shift. So internal, culture victory, everything we want. The next, oh, the next part was we started leveraging technology. And there were three objectives that I wanted to accomplish. Number one was speed to lead. Number two, quantity and quality of touch points. And number three, scaling sales management. Now speed to lead and quality and quantity. You guys know when, when you guys are running webinars, you guys get like tens of thousands of leads and opt-ins and leads, like insane, uh, insane amount of volume. And it's 
humanly impossible to have you know, some human reps reach out with the quality and with the quantity, speed, and quality that we would want. And so Max AI has helped us tremendously with that. It's a conversational AI uh, specifically optimized for the coaching business, coaching industry. And so it does anything like text related. And then for scaling sales management, we started using Gong AI. And the whole point of this, again, is to leverage your team. When you have an all-star team, you want to like multiply, you want to create leverage, and the tools that we use allowed us to do that. So Max AI, imagine you have uh, a thousand uh, abandoned checkout leads coming in every single month, uh, which we do. And you wanna make sure that every single lead is responded to uh, 24 seven within a minute and it's absolutely commission free. That's what Max AI does for us. It's, a, it's hundreds of reps ready to go at your command. So this lady, uh, Adam Effie came in Hey Christian, feels weird that I'm paying and I can't speak to anyone. Uh, and I'm paying after just record, watching these recorded videos and I've sent uh, an email three times requesting for a one-on-one -on -one chat uh, and no one replied. And then Max AI responds, I apologize for the inconvenience and then they go through a back and forth and th at the end of the conversation, uh, the lady was like, there's a sense of security to have texted with a live person. <laughs> right? And so Max AI actually helped uh, boost our abandoned checkout lead conversion by like 30%. Our human reps were closing at 4% uh, on these abandoned checkout leads. And obviously like there was, it wasn't prime speed to lead and the quality wasn't the best. Uh, Max AI, what we did, we just like uploaded all of our co course knowledge, uh, uploaded the goal that we wanted to achieve in that funnel process, which was to bring a mid-ticket sale in from abandoned check -I, and. Uh, what it does, it doesn't replace your salespeople, it, uh, it, it what is, what's the word? It empowers them, right? And so they started, uh, the reps started closing 6%, 7%, as high as 8% on these abandoned checkout, checkout leads, because it's just so much more efficient, okay? And uh, what happens in business, like as a salesperson, it, it, there's like a, there, there was initially, uh, when I was starting to use AI, there was like this a little bit of a fear. Like, yo, I got my human reps. They can outcare uh, any AI. And that's true on the phone, you know? But when you start seeing what it can do on text and the power it has, uh, what I've noticed is whoever is not adap adapting AI into their businesses, they're going to be left behind. You know, it, it's just, it, it's incomparable. And it's starting to learn superhuman persuasion as well. That's what Sam Altman said. The next tool, Gong. We started using it to leverage our sales management. When we have a, this amazing culture, when we have this amazing sales leader, shout out Noreen, uh, one of the best sales trainers that, I, that we have on the team, we gave her access to Gong and it pretty much like doubled the ability for her to coach her reps. And uh, the way that we set it up is we can track people's performance and Crystal right here, uh, we're tracking like how much exit doors we're giving people uh, and uh, Crystal had her best month this last month in October and this was the time she was giving the most exit doors. And it just the data shows right there. And it has the like, ability to coach uh, people live on the call, send clips uh, and it just makes coaching a lot faster so that you don't have to go through like 30 minutes of a transcription to then send a voice memo in Slack that gets lost. Right, so Gong AI, great, great tool as well. When we started leveraging AI, we got uh, like a 40% boost in lead responsiveness. We had way more custom conversations, like custom touch points, because again, Max is doing all the work, all the texting, it knows the specific goal, and it knows your product knowledge, responds within a minute. Our time to manage each reps went down by 60% uh, by using Gong AI, and it saved us so much human hours doing a lot of the repetitive, tedious tasks uh, for like sales, abandoned checkout, and even customer service, service shadow max. Cool? Great, all right. The next thing we started doing was we started having this marketing and sales feedback. When you have the right audience, when you have the right culture, 
we wanted to like keep on finding out these are th these are the audiences that we kept getting uh, results for. They they were the great people in our community, uh, always you know talking and giving feedback and just livening up the community. And uh, we just had these weekly workshops uh, with our media buying team. And what we would do is we would uh, grab like, hey, these are the sales that happened. These are the wins that are happening. And we check where the their, where the uh, leads came from and from which ad and what those ad said, what those, what those copies were. And this like, we never used to have these marketing meetings. And once we did, it was super powerful for the salespeople to know what's going on and super powerful for our media buying team to know what's going on as well. Like that communication has to be very strong. Cool? All right, the final shift. The last shift that we made was the uh, shift in economics. And so what happens is when you have an amazing product and you have an amazing customer journey and you have an amazing uh, sales process and if you're still not profitable the way that you think you should be, if you're still not making enough money that you think you should be, everything we did to the, uh, before this point got us to the middle part. Okay, so we had the 2K offer, 15% refund, 30% upsell at a 7K price point. LTV was $3,050. So all of this worked, we, we were still in the middle. The final adjustment that we made in the last two weeks, we got uh, our upsell to, we, our, our upsell was still 30%, but the one adjustment we did, we did was we increased our price. And when we increased our price, we had the exact same take rate, exact same closing rate. Nothing got affected. But the biggest thing got affected, that got affected was the LTV. We went from a $3,050 LTV to a $3,950 LTV. And that's where like the money was made. And so looking back at this, this is October, like literally last month. Uh, the, the slide that I showed you guys at the very beginning Look at the main number that I want to show you guys, the CPS, 1,828 CPS. The, that little adjustment, the price bump. In the last two weeks, we had a CPS of $2,685. In the last two weeks, three, we collected $373,000 cash collected from our back end. Insane. There we go. So, so the way we won, again, going back to civilization, we won the culture victory, and then we won the scientific victory with AI, and then we won the domination victory by crushing it on, in all fronts, okay? So the path to 2X LTV, for a quick re recap for you guys, we had the best team culture, like amazing team culture. We gave the students our Ritz level experience. Let's go webinar con. Thanks for teaching us how to do that. We had this collaboration between sales and media buying consistently. We leveraged Max AI, and then we had the price bump. Okay? Now, we're here to help as well. I want you guys to scan this QR code and what we will do is, if you guys need help setting up Max in your business, just text Max to this QR code, and we'll do that for you. You can do customer service, it can do a band checkout, it can do book a call, whatever texting function that you guys have in your business, you can start replacing or uh, empowering your reps that are currently doing it as well. What we're also looking for is publishing partners. My brother was mentioning earlier that uh, we've taken three brands to the top 10 uh, leaderboard in like uh, audience uh, with viewership without them having any brands, any face, no social media following. If you're someone who has a genuine experience and expertise in entrepreneurship uh, and you wanna partner with us and bring our team that does all this hard work for you, text partner to that number. And we're also looking for CEOs for our businesses. We launch brands every quarter, and we want leaders who stand by this vision, who want to work inside of this amazing culture, who want to bring results for our companies 
and our students. And if you want to be a CEO, text CEO to that QR code. All right. Thank you. That's all that I have for today. My name is Wahaj Faruqi, part of Lions Digital Studios. It's been a pleasure speaking on this stage. Hopefully, you guys learned a lot. Uh, I just want everyone in this room next year when we come back to have like amazing sales culture, amazing numbers. We want to set a new norm, right? We don't want to be at that 10% upsell rates. We want to be at that 30% upsell rates. Who wants to be at that 30% upsell rate for the webinar? Let's go! <laughs> About that life. <laughs> Keep it going. Awesome job. Awesome job. That was fantastic. Fantastic.